All right, great. So now we've learned how to actually deploy a contract to any blockchain that we want using the command line. But now I'm going to teach you the second way we're going to deploy our contracts. And this is the way we're actually going to do it for the rest of the course. When we're deploying our code, we want to make sure we have a continuous reproducible way to deploy our smart contracts. And when we test our code in the future, we want the tests to test the deployment processes as well as the code. So instead of just doing the command line, we're actually going to write a script for us to deploy our code. And because Foundry has everything written in Solidity, this script that we're going to write to deploy our code is also going to be written in Solidity. And this is where Solidity as a contract language versus Solidity as a scripting language is a little bit different. Foundry has a whole bunch of built-in stuff to give our Solidity even more functionality outside of just smart contracts. And you'll learn about how later in the course. But for now, we're going to learn how to create a script to deploy our simple storage contract. And the way we create a script to do it is first, we come to our script folder, we'll right click, new file, we'll create deploy simple storage dot s dot soul. This dot s dot soul is just a foundry convention. Most of the time scripts have a dot s dot soul instead of just being dot soul. And in here, we're actually going to write a contract in solidity to deploy our smart contract, which sounds a little bit weird, but don't worry too much about that. This deploy script is going to be written in solidity, but it, it shouldn't be considered a contract that we actually ever want to deploy. It's just for deploying our code but it is written in Solidity. So since it's written in Solidity, we'll do the same thing as usual, SPDX license identifier, MIT. And if you're using GitHub Copilot, it might even auto suggest like this. And I'm just gonna go ahead and hit tab. I'll do Pragma Solidity 0.8.18. And then I'll create contract, deploy simple storage like so. And I'll hit save. If you go to the Foundry docs, we can actually scroll down to this Solidity scripting section in the tutorials, and you can learn how to actually write scripts and work with scripts. The first thing that we need to do in order to tell that Foundry that this is a script is we need to actually import some additional code. Now, one of the things that we saw in here was this lib folder. And this lib folder actually starts with another folder called Forge STD. This Forge STD stands for Forge Standard Library. In here, there's a ton of helpful tools and scripts for working with Foundry. And to tell Foundry that this contract deploy simple storage is actually a script, we need to import from Forge STD. So we can do import forge std slash script dot soul. And we'll have our contract deploy simple storage inherit all the functionality of this script by saying is script. And I know we learned about inheritance before, so you should know what that means is script. And then additionally, our deploy simple storage is going to need to know about our simple storage contract. So we'll go ahead and import that import. We'll go down a directory since we're in the script folder and we need to go to the SRC folder. These two dots is how you go down a directory. We'll do slash SRC VS code even might help prompt you here dash and it again auto prompted for me and I hit tab and we now we've imported simple storage. Now, since we know that this is the noob way, to do imports, we're going to do the cool way by using named imports instead of nameless imports. Okay, great. Now inside every deploy or script contract, we need our main function, which is going to be called run. And this is going to be the command that gets called when we go to deploy our contract. So we'll create a function called run, we'll make it external, and we can have it return a simple storage contract. And in here, we're going to use a new keyword that we haven't used before. We're going to say vm.startbroadcast. vm is a special keyword in the Forge standard library. The vm keyword is a special keyword that we can only use in Foundry. It's related to something called cheat codes. We're not going to go over that too deep right now. You can see a whole list of Foundry cheat codes in the documentation and Forge standard library references, which have even more cheat codes as well. This VM stuff is only gonna work in Foundry. If you actually were to try to deploy this in Remix or some other framework, it wouldn't work. These VM cheat codes only work in Foundry. It's not valid in regular Solidity, but if we're inheriting Forge STD code, this VM keyword exists. If you're using the hardhat Solidity extension, we can actually control or command click 
into VM, and we can actually see where it's defined. But if that's confusing, ignore that for now. This VM.start broadcast says, hey, everything after this line inside of this function, you should actually send to the RPC. And then when we're done broadcasting, we're going to do VM.stop broadcast. So everything inside of these is what we actually want to send and deploy. The reason we have this is because maybe we have some stuff like we want to set some boilerplate code before we actually send transactions and we don't want to spend any gas to like set starting value to one, right? So any transaction that we want to actually send, we need to put in between these vm.start broadcast and vm.stop broadcast. And for us to deploy our simple storage contract, we just do simple storage, lowercase simple storage, right? These are different. Simple storage, the variable, simple storage, the contract equals new simple storage like this. And remember, what does this new keyword do? Well, the new keyword creates a new contract in Solidity. It's also going to create a new contract in between our vm.start broadcast. This being in between these vm.start broadcasts is going to send a transaction to create a new simple storage contract. If this is a little bit confusing for you right now, that's okay. It's going to make more sense as we go on later in the course. But for now, just do this and follow along with me. And then, of course, we can say return simple storage. Okay, great. Now, if we pull our terminal back up, we can see we have Anvil running right now. And we can actually kill it with Control C. We'll clear to the top. And what we can do now is run forge script script deploy simple storage dot s dot soul hit enter and look oops looks like I got some different solidity versions so let's change this to a carrot in here and let's change this to a carrot in here this being an 18 so that they're both on the same version let's type clear close these or minimize these out we'll hit up twice and we'll run this again and now what you'll see is it's compiling it compiles both the script to deploy and our simple storage contract using 0.8.19 because we did the carrot compiler successful script successful tells us the gas and then we went ahead we returned our simple storage contract which was deployed here now you might be asking wait 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 Patrick we we don't have anvil running we don't have a local blockchain running where did this deploy to well in foundry if you don't specify an rpc url it'll just automatically deploy your contract or run your script on a temporary Anvil chain. So once I ran Forge script, it saw there was no RPC URL, so it spun up a temporary Anvil blockchain, deployed our simple storage, and then tore it back down at the end. You can see at the bottom, if you wish to simulate on-chain transaction, pass an RPC URL. So if we do clear, we run Anvil, and then create a new terminal. We could run Forge script, script, deploy simple storage at s.sol and I'm hitting tab to auto complete that dash dash RPC URL go back to anvil copy this go back to bash HTTP dot dot slash slash we actually almost deploy this to the blockchain we actually did a simulation of deploying to our anvil chain here it gives us one more piece of information to broadcast these transactions add dash dash broadcast and wallet configurations to the previous command. And now we get a new folder, which gives us information about our previous deployments in case we forget. For example, if we deploy a contract, we can flip back here and see where we actually deployed code. So let's pull up our terminal once more and actually deploy this to the blockchain. So we'll hit clear, I'll hit up. We have our RPC URL. So now let's do dash dash broadcast and we'll do dash dash private key and we'll grab a private key from Anvil and paste that in here and hit enter. Boom. And we see at the bottom on chain execution complete and successful. And we see we get some transactions here. We waited for receipts, etc. So fantastic. So we learned how to actually deploy our smart contracts through the scripting command now. Awesome job.